Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is a Series 7 Guru, a.k.a. Dean Tenney. I am so excited. This is the first time ever live stream Q&A from the off-grid studio. Woohoo! I got a giant, I got a giant lithium battery that uh, whizzes and whirs as it's uh, charting. I, I joke, right? I think I could fly the Millennium Falcon with this lithium battery. Uh, hence the headset, so you don't have to listen to the whir and the. And we have our always very special guest, Brian Lee, managing member, Test Geek, uh, Test Geek himself. Uh, tell us what serious exam you're taking, uh, and also where you're joining us from. And uh, we'll get some housekeeping out of the way, and then we'll get going on any content questions you have. Uh, if you do have a question, it's helpful for us if you tell us what exam you're taking and then your question. So we know whether it's the SIE level of complexity or it's the Series 24 level of complexity when answering that question. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's helpful. Uh, the best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. Uh, but we have uh, for paid supplements, if you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it, best in class, uh, particularly the performance tracker and the number of practice questions. Uh, Brian has been kind enough to offer his content as a paid supplement to our viewers at a 20% discount, and th that discount code is GURU20. Uh, uh, this live stream is available as a podcast on both YouTube and Spotify if you miss us. If you are using my channel as a paid or a free supplement, it the way it's organized, you don't want to try and find like a needle in a haystack. It's organized by playlist based on your series. So what you would do is find the series playlist for, for example, the SIE. There's three of them. The playlists are in suggested watch order. And the videos in the playlist are in suggested watch order. The channel is self-serve. Please don't send me emails. What should, what should I watch next? It's a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. If you're looking for a particular topic on my channel, use the channel search bar, like margin or crude interest. Put that in the channel search bar, and all the content we have uh, available will come up. Uh, we do a drawing each week uh, for a free coaching call, 30 minutes. Uh, it's not a floating liability that I have to you. If you win it, it's March 3rd, 4 p.m. Pacific time. You claim it within an hour. I send you the Zoom invite. You can share it. You can sell it to sell it to someone else. I don't care. I'll be there at that time, opening up the Zoom to talk about anything you'd like to talk about. It is recorded. It is shared uh, with other folks. All right. Let's see. Let's see what we got going on in the comments, Brian. All right, Joy Bot. I love it. I love. I love your avatar, and I love uh, your attitude. Let's do it. Indeed. Uh, thanks for joining us, Oz. I'm glad you can make it as well. Joybot, who else is going to slay the Series 7 dragon, he wants to know. So anybody else got that Series 7 dragon on their schedule, a destination, a, a date with destiny? What is the cap rate Series 7? I'm not sure what you mean by the cap rate. Uh, you have uh, any idea? Like, what, yeah. What, what do you think it means there, Brian? Uh, index annuities. Oh, oh, yeah. So index annuities, if that's what you mean, let's talk about equity index annuities. First... It's not a securities product because you can't lose your principal. Uh, I think, Brian, it was designed so insurance agents wouldn't have to take a six or a seven. And what we do is we tell you that uh, we're going to reset that thing based on whatever the referenced index is, for like the example, the S&P 500. Uh, and then we tell you there's a participation rate. So, you know, 85% of that return. And the, my, the biggest test question is no negative reset. And then if the Dow goes up 40%, the cap rate says we're only paying you like 15. I'll show you. Brian Brian is bored there, so he can kind of show you. It is testable on both 65 and 66, don't you think, Brian? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it oftentimes can be calculation, and you have to do both. Yeah, you have a good practice question where you actually make them calculated, I think. Yeah, so. where you give them three consecutive years and based on participation rates and cap rates. Kaplan has an excellent question. Yeah, I know because I gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know uh, it was similar to yours. Now I know who came first. <laughs> uh, that's right. Um, and so they'll give you three consecutive years and you have to do it based on the participation rate. In other words... 
the annuitant, the customer, only gets 80% of the index's return up to a certain cap. You cannot gain any more than this cap. So if the uh, S&P went up 20%, right, you participate in 80% of that, that means you should get 16%, but it's capped at 15 So that's how that kind of works. Yeah, I, the other big thing that I always hear on debrief is, again, this idea of no negative reset. So that when they give you that down, that if they're in that sequence, if they give you a negative number, it doesn't count, right? It, uh, they might even give you like a 2%, you know, right. even if it goes down. Right. And can you imagine how easy it is to sell to somebody who says you will never lose money even <laughs> yeah. if the market goes down? That's right. So, Those insurance agents, <laughs> as I always joke, insurance agents sell fear. Yeah, <laughs> and stockbrokers so here. green, right? Uh, taking the series six. Welcome, Oz. Welcome, welcome. Got my 65 tomorrow. Well, I the biggest thing I would tell you is to get a good night's rest. It doesn't do you any good right now, but I, I would tell you that I am a you know paid social media influencer Kaplan, so no surprise. I think Kaplan's the best, otherwise, I wouldn't teach for them and I wouldn't be their official social media influencer. I think past perfect goes too much into the weeds. It's better that they give you too much than not enough. I would say that. But sometimes too much can be challenging. So I think Kaplan is better. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, STC is fine. I would tell you that if you get a reputable vendor, STC, Kaplan, not been past perfect, and you miss your mark, that's on you. It's not on your test prep vendor. But that being said, I think Kaplan's better. Your thoughts, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've talked about this many, many times. Past Perfect is just way, way in Alice's rabbit hole. Yeah. You know, so they, lots, of, lots of, for example, lots of math that you're never going to encounter on the actual exam. Yeah, so, exactly. so uh, and then the other thing, the big thing that Brian and I, one of the big reasons we're big fans on Kaplan is that performance tractor that makes it so much easier for you to do remediation. That's right. So now that being said, uh, surprisingly enough, I did get permission from STC to use uh, one of their practice exams on the Series 7 and explicate that and share it. And I'm hoping that SDC is going to give me permission to do that with A65 as well. So pay attention to that. I do on the 65 playlist have practice exams, including Brian's. Brian's been kind enough to share uh, his content on the channel. And uh, he thinks, I think, has the most spot on 65 practice test out there. And again, don't misinterpret what I just said. Brian's more than happy to send you the PDF of just the practice exam and rationales. And so everyone's wants to say, well, all I got was the practice test and the rationale. Comes in at a little north of 20, but I like it as something to do as a final mark. And I like it as uh, something to read the night before and morning of your exam. So, uh, but that being said, I think Kaplan is better than past perfect. Uh, just took my fourth practice to test today. I think, ah, uh, Juanito, I don't like that. That is a, the fourth practice test score is not reliable. So I'm not a big fan of doing four practice tests in a day. I believe in doing max one and then remediation, because what you don't want to do is memorize questions and answers. Now I admire your work ethic. I think people, some people are not doing enough, but man, uh, you know, I'd be interested in your scores. And remember trying to get marks and that fourth mark is not going to be reliable. Your thoughts, Brian? I'm trying to understand the sentence structure. I don't know if he I did just took one of them today. Oh, okay. Maybe you're right. I think he took the fourth one Okay. Today. Well, Juanita, uh, let me retract, rewind. <laughs> Kudos. If you've done four, I think that's great. People are not doing enough. So if Brian's right on the grammar, and that's the grammar you meant, I misinterpreted the grammar. Fantastic. I'd like to know what those scores are, what your marks are. So my bad. Thank you, Brian. I'm so glad you're here to uh, save me from... Uh, not so, R. You know what I did? I did something I told us not to do. I did an RTFQ. That's right. Or in this case, that would be RTF. Didn't read the full comment, I guess. See. That was our whole plan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, series 7 next Thursday. All right. I think 7 few weeks. A few weeks is plenty of time to get this wow. done. Uh, well, there you go. You're not monogamous. I, I Listen, if you have the resources... I'm a big believer in using more than one uh, supplement or one more vendor just to get, uh, you know, comfortable with it. What you're looking for is you don't want so many voices you're getting confused. Yeah, right. But what you do want is confirmation. You know, SDC has a question of, about it. 
Kaplan has a question about it. Past Perfect has a question about it. Confirmation. You know, if one of those vendors has a question, the others don't. Uh, you know, and I like that, that you get to exper experience or exposure to different phraseology. So uh, kudos if you can handle that. You got a few weeks. You're certainly not going to run out of practice questions for sure. Brian, your thoughts? Yeah, that's. I don't think you need three. <laughs> to me, it's a little too many. Yeah. A little too many. <laughs> Two of them would be okay, plus yeah. a supplement. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yep. SDC Kaplan and a supplement. You know what Brian and I, and this is uh, Brian's I'm paraphrasing, is that what you want to supplement, whether it's me or Brian, is somebody who's going to distill all of that stuff, particularly past perfect. Oh, if anything needs to be fermented and distilled, it is past perfect. And as uh, Brian says, he like we like to take the mashed potatoes and turn it into a $90 bottle of vodka. <laughs> I'm joking. A, a fried premium vodka. I like it. Series six from uh, Benita Beach. Uh, Benita, all right, cool. Uh, Benita wanted a coaching call. We did a coaching call, I think, last Friday, and she collected on that coaching call. Uh, she had some good questions. I always like when you come to the coaching call with a agenda of things you want to talk about. So that's, it's not necessary, but it's helpful when somebody has a list. Uh, speaking of which, we have a hard close tonight. Uh, I have a Series 24 tutoring session afterwards. So, And again, I'm hoping he comes with a list of things he wants to talk about. Oh, let me kill that banner. We don't need that banner anymore. There we go. Testing Thursdays, Iris. All right. We're sending you good test vibes your way. Good test vibes your way. Past perfect. Well, like I say, you know, I've had a, a meeting with a very senior person at Kaplan, and I told him that the past perfect sales team deserves a bonus because I think they've convinced employing broker dealers because most people who are using past perfect it's through their employer. It's not usually them who purchased it. And I think Brian, that past perspective is convinced. And that's why I told the Kaplan guy, these firms that there's something to be said for tormenting people as they're doing their exam and that when they pass using past perfect, they'll have more product knowledge. They'll be able to go into sales immediately. I totally disagree because I think you should just be focused on passing the test. And in my world, product knowledge comes from sales efforts, not taking tests. You know, the, that's a separate thing. Once you get this rite of passage done and matriculate, then, you know, you can start learning about, you know, how we sell things. Yeah, the only one, you know, problem I have with achievable is correlation. I have a zero problem with achievable on, uh, you know, SIE. But on Series 7, if that's your only study resource, your own paid study material, I do get worried about the correlation uh, with their practice test scores and then what people actually test on. So, you know, I had somebody who was frustrated with Kaplan and uh, she bought Achievable and she was so excited because their scores, you know, rocketed. And I said, well, you know, do me a favor, do Brian's practice test. Your tap practice test, Brian, was more f uh, similar to her Kaplan scores. And she got a 66. And I told her, unfortunately, that's a real score. And she got a 66 on the exam. So I would just say if you're using Achievable for anything other than the SIE, make sure you do a supplement particularly as it relates to the Quebec, the Quebec. Uh, currently, we're on the Series 7. I have a couple of Kaplan questions on tax consequences. We'll put them in the uh, Amato. Just put them in the, the chat, and we'll see if we can tackle them for you. Evening, Carla. Evening. Just finished Brian's full 66-paid course. It was great. woo -hoo! Taking the 66 Saturday. So Brian All In has a whole video series. Uh, you know, and I, I joke, I mean, you know, it's a little over a hundred dollars, but you know, the challenge on my channel is there's like a thousand hours of content. <laughs> and so, you know, I haven't distilled it. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of videos where Brian has uh, distilled it again to where he's only talking about things that are testable in his videos. He's made those editorial decisions for you. Uh, it's not a buffet <laughs> we know, in a good way. And then again, as I said, you get the videos, you get the PDF, you get the practice exam. That's the paid version all in on uh, that, Madison. It sounds like what you did. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it. Go get them. Uh, I like it. You got to be able to take down any draw. You know, my belt doesn't do so well in the in this off-grid container that I... I'm in a container that I had finished. But I noticed my audio isn't quite as good. Does Mike, can you hear my bell or not? 
Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, I always suggest, particularly on SIE 7, all the exams, but really on SIE, SIE and 7, you want to make sure you overlearn. You don't want to be barely passing. You want to be able to take down any draw. The draws are random. And I always tell people, I'm wishing for you a dream draw. Everything you study shows up. You go, I don't know what the big deal was. But when you get that face of death draw, you want to overlearn so you can take it down. Now, in the SIE, you want to overlearn because it'll pay huge dividends on the next leg of your testing journey, whether it be a six or a seven. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, 66. Woo-hoo. Good evening. I, I, here we go. Boom. Uh, Alicia purchased 100 shares of RMBN common stock on June 6, 2021 at $60 a share. So her cost base is $6,000. On February 11th, 2022, so I'm looking here, Brian, it doesn't look like she's held it uh, for more than 12 months. May be meaningful, may not. RMB paid shareholders a 20% stock dividend. Alicia sold the shares. Well, you know, she still has a cost base of 6,000 and uh, that has now bought her 120,000 shares. So 6,000 divided by 120. How am I getting 120? 20% times 100 is that 20% additional shares. P.S. Alicia gets a 20% more shares, but so does everybody else. There's been no effective change in her cost base or no effective change in her proportion ownership. Cost basis is $50 a share. So I don't know if you're sitting in a, another chat and they're going to tell us she saw. Here we go. Here's the second part. Uh, on December 5th at 55. So I just did the math. She sold uh, at 55. So now I'm going to take 55, <coughs> five dollars yeah. on 120 shares. She has a six hundred dollar uh, gain, taxable gain. Right now, December. Let's go back again. So December of I'm just seeing if it's over a year. December 5th. And it was June 2nd, June the 20. Yeah, so that's going to be a long-term game. Uh, Brian, did uh, you think I did that correctly or not? Uh, yeah, you did. Okay. I don't uh, think I don't... it goes really that extensive into I'm it. I'm with you. I'm totally with Brian. So, Brian. I think it's more definitional. Yeah, I would know that you're going to end up with more shares at a lower price. I would know there's no proportionate change in your ownership. That's exactly and your cost base is still 6000 So, Amato, if you didn't want to do the math I did, you could have just taken 120 times 55. And compared that to the six thousand, that would have given you the same answer. What are you doing there, Brian? Uh, just real quick, because uh, this is where the proportionate ownership is, right? So after the dividend, it now has one hundred and twenty shares at fifty, right? So your cost basis is affected by That's the right. stock dividend. That's probably the definitional question. I think so. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, you know, you the cost just... basis is reduced because of this, uh, the dividend. Yeah, you have more shares at a lower price. More shares at a lower gotcha. price. So then and I would know. 55, right? So it's a $5 yeah. per share yeah. gain. I would also know that cash dividends are taxable, stock dividends upon receipt or not. That's right. Uh, using Past Perfect, taking the SIE this Friday. Was wondering how it compares. Well, I think past perfect is much more difficult than the actual exam uh, in general. Uh, how, heard a lot about differences in question grammar. Any advice? Well, my suggestion would be, I guess, I'm going to say good news. I think uh, past perfect's grammar is more challenging than the actual SIE. Uh, I don't know what you think, Brian. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, since this is his first exam, he's going to find that the grammar on all <laughs> these exams are going to be different from the publishers. There's yeah. No uh, it's something that we have to get used to. So pass perfect on the SIE, I guess, would be a really good <laughs> challenge on that grammar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, an investor purchased a corporate zero coupon bond at a price of 51. So zero coupon bonds, we're going to have to do straight line amortization upward. It's called accretion. So here it says with the yield of maturity of 4%, who cares? So uh, what I'm going to do is take the difference there, 510, 490. I'm going to take 490. I'm going to divide it by 17. And that's going to give me the adjusted cost base each year. 490 divided by 17. I'm adjusting my cost basis up $28.82. 
Brian's shaking his head, Amato, and what that means is he and I don't believe you're going to encounter this on the test. It's going to be recognition that you need to know that when you buy a zero coupon bond, you have to do straight line amortization upward at called accretion. Not going to make you come up with this $28.82 I just got here on my calculator. I am going to ask you, do you understand your taxes on that? So you're paying taxes on money you're not actually receiving. That's your imputed interest. And that kind of sucks. But you're paying taxes on money you're not receiving. You should know that zero coupon bonds are great to lock in a rate of return because you have no reinvestment risk along the way because you're not getting any income stream. They're great for somebody who needs to set some money at some future date. And they're the most volatile. I'll give Brian his yeah. thing. So again, 73 and three quarters would be 737.75. Uh, you compare that to the seven times 28.82, and that would be the answer. Uh, Brian's putting that up on the board for you. I'm doing it as quickly as possible. Uh, so, Amando, I've just taken times the seven years, and so I'm going to adjust my cost base, $201.76. So 510 plus 201. Boom. Yeah. 402, and that's how you do it. Brian, do you want to explain what's on the whiteboard? This, this zero coupons, corporate zeros, uh, were always a favorite question on the legacy, the old yeah. fashioned Series 7 with 250 questions. Now that it's down to 125 questions, you'll still probably get maybe two or three questions. I don't know one Series 7 zero coupon bond question on the Series 7 that was ever mathematical, especially yeah. with taxes. I often had suitability. Uh, it's used often for college tuition. Well, right. 25 years ago, not so much today, but on the test it is, right? You're very volatile to interest rates, right? The passive income, right? Because you're not receiving any income, but the IRS considers that you do. So you have to pay taxes on that income yeah. every year using a method called straight line accretion. So yeah. it's all definitional again. It's not computational. You know, uh, I always joke, Amato, I showed up at a baby shower and I said, I've had baby Grace 20 grand when she starts college. <laughs> I didn't say I have 20 grand today. And what I bought her was a zero coupon bond 18 years out. It will be $20,000. Yeah. Uh, Nico, man, Nico nailed it. Uh, we have three very good explicated practice exams. Uh, Nico uh, put us on a good roll on doing some explicated practice exams. Uh, no doubt he, he nailed it. We did a Mometrics practice test I had permission to do. And Brian was kind of funky, but it was questions that Nico and I had not seen. It was kind of fun to kind of talk about it. It's been very popular. And then we did a Kaplan. Uh, we had a guy at Kaplan. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he was a tutoring session. He paid to do it. And it, he, the session went so well, I said, hey, uh, you know, uh, if you're up for it, I'd love you to send me back the video. By the way, I don't video people without their permission. Sometimes people go, oh, he's got people on videos. Like people who are in the videos know they're being uh, on the video. Anyways, then we had that one. And we also had uh, just recently an STC. So we got a lot of those up there. So kind of cool. Good. Hello, Brian. What was the, uh, what was one of those exams you said? I wasn't uh, metrics. Sure. Mo metrics, uh, Mo metrics, yeah. It was a kind was of funny. You good? know, they only charge like thirty bucks for their stuff, so I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, you get what you pay for, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, glad to join the legendary broadcast. All right, yeah, we're we're it's fun. We are really kind of picking up things. It's uh kind of exciting. Uh, got there sixty six next Monday. Bob Bryan sixty six video series of study guide. I love it. Uh, Brian, you have any tips uh, in addition to your actual course that he bought or she well, bought? You know, I don't know. Those those definition of persons are going to get you five to ten points. Just by yeah, it. we've got a video. Brian did an evening class in collaboration with us, and that's on the channel called Definitions of Persons and Registrations. And I will uh, link that in the video re uh, video replay in the description. You can check it out. It's worth a lot of points. A lot. Also, of points. also look at my YouTube channel on the discounted cash flow and IRR. Uh, I will link to that. Brian has some free stuff on YouTube, so I'll link to both his uh, definition of uh, persons and registrations and that uh, in the video replay. Yeah. I've uh, been scoring sixty five percent on past perfect finals, option spreads, and margin accounts trip me up. Well. Uh, I wouldn't worry about margin as much as I'd worry about spreads. Options are a bigger deal. 
Uh, margin, maybe three or four questions. If you guess beyond all of them and you tell me you missed the test because of margin, I'm going to say, what were your other problems? Now, in spreads, I call it don't hate the eight. There are eight things you got to know about a spread. What was that eight? How many fingers? Yeah, seven. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to identify the spread, long and short, the same type of option. You got to be able to determine debit or credit, exercise or spider, <laughs> widen or narrow, max gain, max loss, break even, bullish or bearish. Don't hate the eight. I will link to a video in the video description on the replay with a video about that. I would also tell you, Joy Bot, next Tuesday, if you go to my booking page, I'll be doing a live stream overtime session where I will have a whiteboard. And if you want to attend that, you want me to go over spread with you, I'd be more than happy to do so. Uh, 66 Illinois, Ivy, welcome. An investor purchased a new issue corporate bond for 600. So again, you have to do straight line amortization upward amato. It's not Brian and my jobs to do your homework for you. <laughs> so you're going to take $400. You're going to divide it by 20. So I'm going to take 400. I'm going to divide by 20. I have to do straight line amortization upward of $20 each year. I'm going to adjust my cost basis up. I've had it for six years. So I should have adjusted it $120. So my adjusted cost base is $720. I sell it for seven hundred dollars. I got a twenty dollar loss. Right? Uh, are those uh, Kaplan ID questions? I, I don't know. Are those Kaplan QIDs a motto? Yeah. Or are they um, some other QID? It looks like uh, a Kaplan yeah. QID. It, it does. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised. But, hey, I, I love a motto when people come with the QID yeah. and the particular question. So, I uh, really love that part. Right. So, and you can also send me those before we come on here, and I can see what you're looking at. Maybe get a whiteboard and show it to you. I'll tell you what, Dean. The one place where that question, these zero coupon questions have value is the straight line accretion problem could actually appear on the OID municipal bond. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that process can be testable, not on the zero so much, but on the. Well, OID. I, I, I say, Brian, uh, on DB, 50% probability right. motto, that not. you're going to have to do this in the opposite direction yeah. on a muni bond purchased at a premium. Right. So that is a much more likely testable scenario where you buy a mini bond for 1200 with 10 years to maturity. You have to do it downward $20 a year. So definitely there. What mass specifically are you going to see on the seven? Hey, it's a live stream Q and a, it's not a tutoring session. It's not a class. Counting I will formula. Uh, yeah. Option and margin math. So joy, yes. I'm going to link, I'm going to link to a video, all the math necessary to pass the series seven. There I have go. a video called All the Math Necessary. Every once in a while, somebody, oh, you didn't do this. I go, I didn't say all the math. I said all the math oh. necessary. So I will link Joy to that uh, in the video description. Joy, I did a tutoring session. Somebody bought two hours of tutoring, and that's what they wanted to do is all the math. So if you want to see me do it live, all the math with somebody, you can do the tutoring replay. So there's two versions of all the math. There's a version, yours truly, just me, and a whiteboard. And there's a version of me and a student going through all the math. 66, our formula is going to be important to memorize. Brian, you're... Today's you're, a math day, isn't it? I guess, I guess so. I guess so. One yes. math question. One math formula on the test. Brian and I both think, Peter, people get in the weeds on the math. And it's usually people who are math phobic. Oh, my God, Math! Exactly. It is mainly recognizing input and output, not can you do the math. Right. I'd be surprised if you tell me you had to use your calculator on either 65 or 66 more than three, maybe four times. What do you think, Brian? Series 66, one, maybe two. Series 65, three to five. That's yep. it. Yep. You might have to recognize some formulas, yes. but not compute them. Right. I'm with you. Yeah. I had a guy who was doing tutoring on the 66. He said, Dean, I'm not paying you $225 an hour to do math with me. I am a math geek. Exactly. He said, so I, you give me any two numbers I can solve for the third. Good news he passed. But when you know we were talking, he said, Dean, man, uh, I should have memorized the formulas. I mean, I was able to reverse engineer it. But they were basically asking me to recognize the formula. I didn't really spend time on that because you know, I know how to kind of figure that out. And he was basically saying, so math competent as he was, he wish he would have spent more time on just memorization of the formulas. Right. 
Uh, took some time off to regroup. Cynthia's back. All right. That's the right attitude. Resilient. Get back on. Take that dragon down, right? So I love it. Love it, Cynthia. We'll be able to find you those questions for sure between now and your retest. I can't imagine we're not going to be finding you for some points. Uh, 63 second attempt Thursday. Are there any question banks I can purchase? Uh, well, I'd be worried about Thursday because, you know, that's pretty tight. Today's and Tuesday. I think, yeah. So um, the if you were had more time, I would say the Kaplan Q Bank for sure. Uh, that I guess here's what I would say. Buy Brian's 63 practice test. Do you have a 63 practice test? I think I do. I uh, if thinking. he does, I, I think that would be manageable. Uh, maybe do that and see. Well, what email doing. me if I don't. Yeah. So let me put up Brian, uh, uh, Matthew, or go to my channel and do yeah. a 63 practice test. There I don't go. think you want to be buying a QBank. Let me put Brian's contact information up there for you. And if he has one, he's willing to send it to you. Maybe if, if you ask politely, maybe he'll just comp it to you. We'll see. Yeah. But send him an email. Uh, you don't want to, I don't want you to buy a QBank because, you know, you don't, you don't have really time to, to do that. It's got more downside than upside in, in my right. opinion. <laughs> <coughs> let me get rid of that excuse me yeah boy i hope you make it buddy i hope you make it yeah i'm on the slow road to recovery yeah, there's a lot of math there we go boom uh taking sie friday i've been using training consultants i think training consultants a little thin so i would uh suggest uh supplementing whether it's paid or free supplements and i would like you to be in the mid 70 range so there's time to do that on friday so uh, keep grinding is what I would say. Uh, last minute tips, get some, uh, do a practice test on my channel. You can find like five different SIE practice tests. Just do one of those, hit pause, hear the answer, uh, do your answer, hit play. And what I want you to do is compare that score to that 6570. I'd like you to be in the mid 70s. Uh, and I, I don't really care too much for training consultants. But again, we don't want to freak you out. There's a more than 50% likelihood you're fine. But just finish strong, right? You got Wednesday, you got Thursday, so you know don't get wobbly. Brian, your thoughts on that? Yeah, and don't forget the uh, Finra SIE practice. Oh, event. how could I forget that? Absolutely, absolutely. Brian is so right. Uh, if you haven't done it, Anarchy Chicken, I love that Anarchy Chicken. Um, go to the Finra website, take that SIE exam. It's really good. So take that. You can either take that, or you can watch me do it. I do it explicated. And then you can also watch my doppelganger version where I took all their answer sets, Brian, with different questions. So it's the same answer sets, but I flipped the questions. Right. Uh, by the way, don't ever forget my SIE in 60 minutes. That's the most popular video on the channel. So all of you, if you're taking your seven, your SIE, your, your 65, 66, I have a whole playlist of your series in 60 minutes. Uh, people love it. You're not going to learn it the night before, but it helps you get in the brain, the flow. People don't actually wake up in a FINRA NASA circadian rhythm. So uh, watch that. I have a, that SIE thing has 130,000 views. Incredible. Wow. Uh, trouble on present value. Do you think it is heavily tested? I think it's more only recognition, right? If I have a present value of 100, recognizing how I get to 400, or if I have 400, how I get to 100. And uh, I have a video, Michelle, and I will put that uh, on uh, video replay for you. Brian has put on his whiteboard, President. Yeah, it's what you have now today, right? So you're starting today and going into the future. I think for, again, I, I always teach this to non-finance majors like myself. Yeah, so right. if, you got a, if you're a finance major, you know, please cover your ears or whatever. Okay. Or don't don't retaliate with you know exactly. vitriol. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I always say, Brian, to those people, I say I teach to the test, my friend. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't even get me started on that. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think one uh, an easy way to kind of start with present value is just thinking of it as the current market price or current market value of an asset, whether that asset trades on the exchange or it's sitting in your bank account, whatever. It's just the current market value of an asset. That's all it is. Yeah. I'll, I'll link Michelle. I have a pretty good a video. I'm pretty happy with that. That goes over that through the employer. No surprise. Rainy and windy in New York city. Wow. Well, you know, if you want to live in New York city every day, you know, every once in a while you have rain and wind and uh, 
I'm in the outskirts of northern Arizona, you know, in the middle of nowhere, and we have winds that are just incredible. Yes, he does. <laughs> does Brian have a Series 7 exam? Uh, where does that? I miss that. Right there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, right, uh, again, Joey, send Brian a, an email. Uh, you can get that. I, I think it's the best 20, bu 20 bucks or so you can spend. I really but, like the Series 7. Yeah, and then uh, it's also available for free, but it's in video format, and it doesn't come with rationales, and you can hit pause, answer, and hit play. But I think, you know, it'd be great to have it sitting there, and you can take it. And then go over the rationales, and uh, you know, if you have, every, every once in a while say, "Oh, I think this question is terrible," I go, "We'll take it up with Brian. He's more than happy to, <laughs> you know, talk to you." Uh, hi guys, hi. All right, woohoo! Victorious test taker in the house from Washington State of all places. Oh, there of course. you go, Brian's neck of the woods. So now I told you I can tell where Brian's at because he's using a whiteboard that does not have wood. So that means he's not in Seattle. That means that he's Las Vegas. If he's got the white, the board, the timber, then we know he's in uh, Seattle. Exactly. Yeah. Low 70s on past perfect. Well, Mary, that's pretty damn good, actually. You know? I think so, too. Yeah. so I think you should feel pretty good. High 70s in Kaplan. You should be worried. I think those are scores that reflect you're going to make your mark or get the P, as Brian says, right? Yeah. So I think you're in good shape. What do you think, Brian? Good shape? Yeah, it looks 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 really good. I like it. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Too. Take my final exam. Yeah, um, you know, get it. Get a, yeah, get another mark. I think those marks are good, though. Uh, may I receive some guidance on heavily tested sixty six topics? Well, again, it's a live stream. I mean, uh, Nico, I will uh, link to Brian and I did an entire podcast series on the sixty six. And the first episode, I think, is what you should watch. And I will link that to you. It's it's like, what do you think it is, Brian? Is it 40 minutes we did on that? Yeah, it's, they all average about 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah so I'll link to the, the Series 66 podcast. And that first episode would answer that question for you, Nico. Uh, we want you, Nico, to get into the mid-70s. So I don't like that 66, but you're going to keep working because I know you're a worker. I know you're dedicated. I know you're disciplined. I know you're organized because I worked with you on your seven. So I have no doubts you're going to get this testing victory as well. So I will link to that podcast episode uh, playlist. Check it out. Yeah. Oh, man, I hate those uh, scores, Austin. I hate it. Uh, going through all the STC mural material again this time more thoroughly. However, I pushed this to Kaplan QBank. Uh, yeah. I think the Kaplan QBank is uh, uh, thicker, I don't know, better. Or you want to say that. Robust. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for, robust. <laughs> Uh, good night from Florida. Brian got an 81% on Brian's 66. Woo! What should you do? Rinse and repeat, Mary? Don't you think? Am I reading that wrong, Brian? You got 81%? Uh, no, no. Uh, Brian, I got 81 on your paid supplement exam yeah, for 36. Two days. Uh, where you still? need to be. Uh, tomorrow's your last day of studying. I mean, you ought to the day before do low key stuff, maybe review your notes, but you're in great, great shape. So I think Mary, you're doing well. Yeah. Right. Whatever you're doing is working. Yeah, there minutes. you go. Get some exactly. sleep. You want to be well rested, but what you're doing is working. Those scores are great scores. Great marks. Uh, I've been getting between 30 to 70. Wow. Well, Louise, oh. uh, uh, I, I would say you have a pretty high beta, my friend. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure if I'm reading this right. Uh, I don't know how you would get a 30, but the 30 is definitely problematic, right? You got you can't have 30. So uh, I don't know how big that data set is. Yeah, Brian. May I explain why he's getting sure. 30 to 70? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to assume he's doing Kaplan and he's doing custom quizzes, which we know, oops, let's learn how to spell custom quizzes, which we know can be. A high variable rate. Yeah, uh, I often see high variable rates. Maybe not as low as thirty sometimes, but for anywhere from thirty. So those are custom quizzes, and I tell people don't worry so much about evaluation on the custom quizzes. Probably doing unit quizzes after each unit, and that's where you're finding the variability. Don't worry so much about the scores on those. Just get through the material, lay the base, lay the foundation. Right? It's helping to retain and give you. Uh, test taking practice. Eventually, you're then going to do the simulated exam, and that score 
will be a far better evaluator okay. as to where you are. Yeah. And I, Luis, I would also like to know when you're testing. So you, know, if you put that in the chat. Uh, I'd recommend viewers use a supplement as I found STC's QBank to be pretty thin. Uh, you can memorize the STC QBank and, and, and then the scores do not reflect where you're really at. doesn't happen often. I mean, it's a champagne problem that you've worked so hard you've memorized it, but yeah. Uh, keep taking questions. Again, we're here for each other. So you have victorious test takers in the house. You have other people in a similar situation. So we're not only here for content. We're also here to buck up those people who might be worried unnecessarily. You know, it's hard because you don't know that unless we tell you, Mary, we think you're in a good spot. Uh, but I think that's a good suggestion. Just keep doing your practice, drilling and rehearsing, and then make sure you're as well rested as you can be. And, uh, you know, confidence, I think, takes care of some anxiety. And so try and work on the confidence level. 66 next Friday, my thoughts on SDC. I think SDC is fine. Uh, I think the correlation, I think SDC, we'd like to see the same scores, high uh, mid-70s, higher the better, mid-70s. What do you think, Brian? I think there's... Absolutely, yeah. The, yeah I they, don't think, right. Yeah. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Brian's got the best correlation, but there's strong correlation. There you go. Mary says your supplement is amazing. Thank you. Wow. I, Mary, uh, I have 24s who are struggling with uh, buy-ins and sell-outs. Exactly. And I swear this is so funny to me. And I'll say, Brian has a free video on about closeouts on 24 on his YouTube channel. And uh, I, I reminds me here because you said amazing. I've literally had 24s tell me they think this video of Brian's is like life changing. And I want to say, wow, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm not sure what kind of life you're living. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Otto. Our, our, our pleasure. I mean, as I told you, Otto, I like that you're coming to our live stream. We do it every Tuesday. You're coming with specific questions. So love it. And then we can tell you whether we think you need to worry about it or not. And as we say, it's a buffet. If you don't like what Brian and Dean say, well, you know. Don't listen to do what you want. We do have, you know, a lot of experience, you know, so I would uh, say it would be a, probably be unwise not to be following uh, the OGs on some of this stuff. The old guys. And there you go. Well, OG is old gangster, but old guys will work. <laughs> For Series 7 test takers, I would like to focus. I would not focus on partnerships. Absolutely money back. All vendors go way overboard on partnerships and way over on balance sheets. I am so with you. Uh, I ha had the channel was up for three years before I made any balance sheet lectures because I just don't think it's important. So excellent. Confirmation. Confirmation. I'm stressing about portfolio management strategies and techniques. Any topics I should focus on strictly. Uh, I would say make sure you can contrast active management versus passive management, uh, strategic versus tactical. Uh, Brian, any more thoughts you have on that? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so, okay. Well, I, I I differ somewhat from the textbooks in that I use buy and hold strategies as a third standalone category. Okay. Most of the textbooks included under strategic, but because of the way some of the test questions are written on the test, it can get kind of confusing. So I just separate strategic, tactical, and buy and hold. And what's your difference between strategic and buy and hold? Well, the buy and hold, of course, has the low taxes, low expenses, yep. right, and is a passive right. Okay, uh, management, and that's that's really all you want to yeah deal with. Uh, second run on the seventh on the eleventh got sixty nine capital master. You should pick up points. Uh, uh, back in the days when we scored, I got scores whether you passed or not. Kaplan would track that, and on average, people improved five to twelve points. So right. I think you're in good shape. Uh, the mastery is certainly more difficult than the answer. Yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know that, that, Joy, again, it's kind of a broad question. I would tell you that function three is 91 questions. And of those 91 questions on basic product information, investment vehicles, the three biggest are options, munis, and mutual funds. You know, options 20 plus or minus, mutual funds 20 plus or minus, munis 20 plus or minus. So I would say those would be the three that if you max them out, you could probably still get past it and pass the test. Would you add anything to that, Brian? You will not be shot in a German bar. You will not be shot in a German what? Because you said three this way. It comes oh, from that. Oh, 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 okay. Anybody okay. okay. know that movie? No, no. Inglorious Bastards. Uh, oh, no, I did see the movie. 
Sorry. You are um, Tarantino. Uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I've been so sick. Uh, most <laughs> topics on the Series 7. Oh, yeah. And uh, the Function 3, you said the options, the music. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not even That feed directly into all those suitability. suitability. Yeah, Joy, if you go go to my playlist, the first playlist, <laughs> uh, I, that video is called To Pass the Series 7, Know the Series 7. I will link that. I literally go through FINRA's content outline on what they're going to test you and the weighting of the exam itself and where you should spend some time. So I'll link to that. Check that video out. I do exactly uh, that. Uh, thank you. How can I find Brian's link to his exams and video walkthrough? We have a banner for that, I think. Let me see. Is that the right banner, Brian? TaskGeekExamPrep.Teachable.com? That's the video. That's the all-in. Yeah. The all-in. There you go. So if you want video, the all-in on Brian, you can find it there at Teachable.com. TaskGeekExamPrep.Teachable.com. Uh, and remember, 20% discount code is Guru20. Yep. Okay. Let's see. And please make sure you use Guru20 on anything you you please do. Someday I got to get commissions from Brian. Not anytime yeah. soon, but you know. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Lang Langelier Scotch. Is that what it's called? Lang Lang yeah, there you go. Lagavulin. Lagavulin. Yeah. Okay, we just did that one. No, we did that one. We did that one. Oh, we did that. Uh, can you help explain AMT, the alternative minimum tax, and public municipal bonds? Well, there's two bonds that are going to be preference items under the AMT. Those are industrial development revenue bonds, uh, also known as industrial development agency bonds. And the IRS says those bonds are supporting a private activity. So suitability is subject to the AMT. The customer would know if he is. The second one is stadiums. And the IRS calls that public purpose non-essential. So the, if you do your taxes, Brooke, everybody does their taxes the same way. And then let's say you make uh, several hundred thousand dollars. Let's call it a couple hundred thousand. And you get down and your tax liability is such that we look like we owe you money for being a citizen. We're going to make you use an alternative method, which means everybody's going to have a tax liability. That's called the alternative minimum tax. And if you're subject to the AMT, I should not recommend private activity or public purpose non-essential bonds. So that's the test question. Brian, you want to add to that? I think it's that simple, don't you? I, I think the question is fairly simple that uh, it, it's it's similar to uh, your customer is subject to the AMT, which of the following bonds would be least suitable? There right? you go. And you have to find an example of one of these. That's, oh, there that's you go. Yeah. There point you and go. click, I think is what you call it. Right? I call it aim and shoot, point and click. Aim, aim and shoot, shoot, point and click. Yeah. Uh, then I always say don't turn aim and shoot, point and click questions into judgment questions that aren't right. there. Right. Right. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I'm about to take the 65 Saturday. I've taken Kaplan semi Q banks and got 80. Woo! Practicing I'm 67. Well, don't get wobbly, Jared. Just I think you're in good shape. Do another one. Get that 67 out of your system. But uh, I think it's more likely than not you're going to pass. Uh, this is Tuesday. I think you have time to do two more practice exams and remediation on, on, on those and get to that practice test score. Uh, to the mid 70s is where Brian and I'd like you to be. So, uh, using achievable and passing finals with 73, missing questions on registration. What do you recommend? Uh, again, I'll link Morgan to Brian's discussion on definitions and registrations. I also have a video I'll link to called The Mighty 90. I attempted to do the entire 63 in 90 minutes. It's a very popular video. I highly recommend it. No surprise. And I will link to that as well. So um, that's my recommendation. I'll follow through in the video description. Brian, you have any other recommendations? No, that's it. That's absolutely right. Uh, how many math calculations will there be? I think we answered this earlier. You know, one. Do you think Kaplan QBank reflects difficulty in content? I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. So absolutely. I used it for Series 7. I thought it was great. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know why you would not be sure on the 66, you know. Uh, Brian isn't a big a fan of this guy as I am, but, you know, the guy at Kaplan who's in charge of our NASA content, I say R because I used to be a Kaplan person, uh, is Chuck Lowenstein. He loves this stuff, you know, so he spends a lot of time and energy trying to uh, make sure he's got questions that reflect the actual exam. Now, 
where Brian and I do agree he does go overboard every now and again. <laughs> and he'll have a question that you go, oh, my God. My favorite, Michelle, every once in a while there is a question where he says, well, you may not see this on your exam. And Brian and I go, well, then why are you putting it in there? <laughs> Chuck is actually one of my favorites. At yeah. yeah, yeah, he's very eclectic. He's eclectic. He is, very much so. Uh, let's see. I do. Guy, if, we're, if, if we're as old as we are, Chuck must oh, be. Oh, there. he's got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't Nicholas. talked to him in a long time, so I don't know. Thank you, Nicholas, so much for joining us from Facebook. We broadcast to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and X, and uh, by far, YouTube is our preferred platform, but we love it when we see people joining us from those other uh, platforms, whether it be Facebook, LinkedIn, or X. Uh, how do you differentiate strategic versus tactical? They're not synonymous. So, Nicholas, I was in the Marine Corps. And I was in intelligence of the Marine Corps. And the intelligence of the Marine Corps is tactical. What's behind that tree? Strategic would be, you know, satellite imagery. I joke, uh, Nicholas, about playing chess. If you're a good tactical player in chess, that means you're more short-term oriented and you're stronger in the uh, beginning, opening, in the mid-game. And strategic means I'm better at the long game. Tactical means shorter term and Tactical means sh uh, shorter term, strategic means longer term. And then we talk, Nicholas, about the task questions. Tactical means it's going to be less tax efficient. You're going to have a higher cost structure. You're trying to perhaps beat the market, seeking alpha. Strategic is the opposite of that. So uh, it looks like Brian's got his board fired up. So they're not synonymous. To say I'm good tactically not is not the same as say I'm good strategically. Not at all. No. So you want to explain your board there, Brian? Uh, yeah, just you know, strategic. I always think of the uh, uh, strategic portfolio all asset allocation models, 70-30, right? It's 70-30. It's always going to be 70-30, right? Tactical, however, you can go in and buy and sell and buy and sell based on current market conditions. For example, if commodities get hot all of a sudden, Right. They might sell out their real estate holdings and put in commodities or they might sell out small caps. And NVIDIA. And we go all in on NVIDIA. <laughs> exactly. It's just it's just uh, it, it's it, this is market timing is exactly. What yeah. This is. Yeah. And then remember the difference. I, I, I don't know if you'd agree with this, Brian, but I do think the NASA exams are a little prejudicial in terms of they prefer strategic and passive kind of strategies yes. over. Yes. You know, tactical and timing the market and sector rotation, that kind of thing. <coughs> I think oh, if you finance finance schools, they, they yeah. do the same way too. So uh Nicholas, I watched all your suitability videos. Thank you so much. Rich content. You thank you. Uh thank you for the work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, Brian teases me. I I was a retired stockbroker, then I said I'm a semi-retired stockbroker. And Brian said, Dean, you're not even retired now. Uh <laughs> so what uh, start out as a hobby has actually become a kind of a full-time thing. Uh, definitely okay. important to understand the ins and outs of each product. Absolutely. Brian and I both agree, Nicholas, that suitability comes from product knowledge, not the other That's way around. Exactly right. Now, we think people are trying to tax suitability without the product knowledge. And so you got to lay that base by knowing, you know, options, knowing munis, knowing mutual funds. Then you can apply that to either being suitable or unsuitable. That's the way to attack is through product knowledge first. He found right. the magic golden ring. There you That's go. It. It's all about product. Uh, taking the 66 two weeks. Loved you guys uh, for a Kaplan supplement. There you go. Uh, love it. Uh, Pat, they love it. We, you know, victorious test taker is what it's all about. I mean, Brian, I'm just uh, so gratified and feel so blessed that the channel is over three and a half million views. We're coming up on 30,000 subscribers. I don't do hashtags. I don't do search engine optimization. I just try and help people pass their test. And, you know, it's pretty simple. They pass their tests. They give us referrals. Uh, you know, life is wonderful. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, besides regulations, registration side of Section 4, uh, where should I put most of the time on the 45 questions? Haas, I would put it on disclosure and unethical business practices. Perfect. There you go. Brian agrees. Perfect with question. Perfect answer. Woo! <laughs> it really is. How soon should you take the 66 after passing the seven? Everybody's different. Uh, every firm, I think, has expectations. My expectation would be two, three weeks, Brian. What do you think? How soon? Should, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, two to three I mean, weeks. Yeah. And then again, it always depends. Two to four. Yeah. yeah, it always depends too on whether you're, you know, full time study or part time study, right. or whatever the case may be. Should I be doing one practice exam a day? Why not, Daniel? Why not? As long as he remediates. That's right. Just don't pile them up on upon each other. Do one, remediate, do one, remediate. Uh, I wouldn't want you doing more than that. And I would be happy if it was every other day. You know, it doesn't have to be every day. That's right. Uh, my boss suggested I take the 66, then found the seven, found that interesting thoughts. I don't know why your boss would suggest the 66 before the seven. That's kind of weird, Oz. So uh, I don't know why they would suggest that. Uh, I believe in taking down the exam as they're in front of you. So I'm not a big fan of trying to reinvent or be clever. The sequence is SIE 766. And if you're doing some other sequence, I don't know why you would be doing that. I'm personally, you know, there might be other extenuating circumstances. Here's one, Brian, I've heard that I think is stupid. People are, some people are being told that the 65 is easier than the 66. I don't believe that. And that they should take a 63, 65 instead of a 66, I've, which I think is silly. I've uh, seen. I, and I think uh, it would be a good fallback. If, for example, we miss the 66, then I do believe it's a fallback 63, 65. But why get 30 extra questions? I mean, it's just stupid. Uh, what I'm doing, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it only because I'm waiting for my job to start. Okay, well, that makes sense. So Madison is making the point that the SIE and 66 do not require sponsorship. So then that would make sense. So that's a, a circumstance in which if you have your SIE, you have your 66, you're going to get sponsorship because the 66 doesn't work without a seven. So she's going to have that done. And by the way, even if you don't have a sponsorship, you're going to be less of speculation in human capital if you show up with that in place already. Right. So I think it'll help your job prospects. Yeah. No, the most common, it's not a trend. I, I don't even like calling it a trend. Almost every employer is going to have you take an SIE, a seven, and then a 66. So unless there's different circumstances, I don't know why you would not be doing that sequence. If you complete that sequence, I call that the test taking registration hat trick. Three victories in a row. Three victories in a row. So I believe you're fine to do that. Good luck. Boom. Love it when Brian starts writing on his dry erase board. Always listen and take notes when that board. He loves his board too. He's old school, man. He's old school. It's not you know, old school. It's oh, well, just the uh, best uh, way to do it. Hey, Amato. I, I got to tell you too. Uh, I almost made. I think have I done a complete live stream where I forgot to bring back. I forgot one to slip up this thing. I sometimes forget to bring him back into the the screen. When he's done with the whiteboard. So, hey, Brian, you see what I got behind me? Yes, I. Dude, Ooh. I saw first thing I saw. Ooh, watch out, world. Uh, I've been going through your videos throughout the week, still going on your recent Series 7 video with your student, but nervous, 65. We want to get those mid-70s, but uh, great. That's All great. right, so now let's see if Dean can find the giveaway tool. Uh, I think we're at the end of our session. Looks like we're kind of caught up. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Giveaway tool. Choose live stream. There we are. Uh Let's make, uh, oh, we'll make today uh, off grid because this is the first time we are actually doing this uh, from my studio here in the undisclosed location. Uh oh, what happened? Am I still there? It looks like I just. Yeah, you're here. Yep. Okay, let me go get the shared board. And I have to say, Dean, it's done quite well. Uh, what's that? Uh, your off-grid place. Oh, yeah. Great. I don't like having to wear a headset, but I got that lithium battery. That yeah. Okay. Let me get the doom. If you want to participate in the uh, coaching call, just put off-grid capital. You got to put it exactly the way you're going to see it in a moment. Is it one, on going to be one word or two words? Uh, yeah, it's one word. So let me then go get this. Where is this thing? Giveaway tool. There we go. There we go. Share. Off grid. Uh, yep. Can you guys uh, see that? There you go. And let me get rid of Brian and I. Boom. I'm not quite sure why it's not giving us full screen. 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's cap sensitive, Joy Bot. So you might want to put that in again. It won't matter if you put it in more than once. So don't think you're going to win if you put it in more than once. It doesn't affect uh, the wheel. Remember, we got to claim in one hour, and you got to uh, send me an email. Claim your winnings at Dean the Series Seven Guru at gmail.com. Okay, we got. Is that it? Nope. We still got people coming in. Off grid. Got people coming in still. Okay, I think that's it. Here we go with the drawing. Drum roll, please. Boom. All right, Isaac. So send me an email and I will send you your Zoom invite for your coaching call. So. Uh, send that to me in the next hour, and uh, we'll set that up. You'll get your Zoom invitation. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, in this first ever live stream from uh, my off-grid location. So now Brian has two uh, locations, and I have two locations as well. He's got Vegas and Seattle, and I got uh, Las Vegas and uh, northern Arizona. Uh, remember, a inch by inch, your exams are sent. Yard by yard, your exams are hard. And Brian, you say, keep it simple. Stay with what you know. You take the test. Don't let the test take you. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next Tuesday.